finding our identity in God's grace alone, we will see God's kingdom expand across the globe as we love people well and serve our spheres of influence. We will lead God's people to a flourishing life as we help them build healthy relationships and grow in awareness of how they can walk out all the unique gifts and talents they have in Christ. We will impact every city we are in by meeting everyone where they are with God's tangible love, with innovation and creativity, always pointing to Christ as the author of our faith story. We as the collective have the opportunity to come together in unity and love well, because our God and Creator loves us well. We can be generous because He is generous with us, and we can dream big because our God is able, through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. We as the church have been created and called for a purpose, and today we can embrace our place and fulfill that purpose. We are the collective, and we are united under one name and for one cause, Jesus. Welcome everyone to the Collective Online Campus. I'm so happy and excited to be welcoming all of you today. If you've been part of the TC family, welcome back. And if you're new here, I want to extend a very special warm welcome to you. Also, I would like to draw your attention to a QR code that's going to appear in the screen. Now you can scan this QR code and this will lead you into our contact page. So we'll have all our contact information and you can type something in there, whether you want to say hi or you want to ask more information about us, we would love to get to know you. This is just one of the ways so that we can get connected and we can put a face behind this screen. So we know that you guys are watching from a lot of parts of the world and also maybe you're in your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen, wherever you are, we want to get connected with you and we want to know you more. Now, if you're a parent of a teen, I would encourage you guys, or if you're a teen, to head over to our TC Youth service happening every single Sunday at 10 a.m. You don't want to miss out. Also, if you're a parent of a little one, I want to encourage you to head over to Young's YouTube channel where we have online lessons every single Sunday and fun activities throughout the week. Now, that is it for me. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow our social media, and enjoy the service. Search the world, but it couldn't feel me. Man's empty praise, treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Mm, yeah. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is. Is the God of the mountain Is the God
For 
Hey, TC family, happy Sunday. I love it that you are here with us. And we just wanna take some time out of the service to make a special announcement of what's happening in the life of the collective. For the past years, TC has been affiliated with a branch of government known as a synoid, uh, or you may know it as a denomination, under the branch of government PGLII, which oversees the spiritual bodies of the churches in Indonesia. And we've been working with this uh, denomination, Gay SJA, for quite some time, but recently we have made a shift to come under the synoid or denomination GVI, Greja Victory Indonesia, which is part of the global network of C3. And you may have heard of C3 churches. They're an incredible family that really believe in empowering churches all over the globe, building up leaders and really allowing God's kingdom to advance by discipleship and spirit-led lives. So we're excited about this move. And we have Pastor Joshua here with us who has cleared his time to come out and just pray with us and make this announcement with us. And Pastor Joshua oversees all the C3 churches in Indonesia. And he's an incredible guy. And him and I have built a great relationship uh, over this past year. And we're thankful for him. We're thankful for his leadership. We're thankful for his heart for God's people and the kingdom of God. Um, so Pastor Joshua, I'll just hand it over to you and you can kind of share your heart for this. Thank you, Pastor Alex and Pastor Janae. Thank you also for welcoming me. And it's true, uh, I'm Joshua Winarta as the uh, C3 Indonesia uh, Overseers. And it is a privilege for us to uh, work together in the kingdom of God. As you know, C3 Churches is led by Pastor Phil Pringle and we are present in more than 64 countries and we have more than 600 churches. And in Jakarta alone, we have uh, six churches. Now with TC, becoming eight churches wow. and more than 22 churches in Indonesia. So uh, we are spirit driven, spirit empowered and connected. And the way I'm connected to Pastor Alex is introduced by Pastor Jimmy Halim of the C3 2020. So it is uh, so good to, to know that you are also in journey together. So today, I just want to declare to all of you that TC Church, the collective church Jakarta in uh, Pondok Indah as well as in uh, Peak is officially joining City Church Movement. So we just want to uh, congratulate uh, to uh, all of you, also all that watch. So uh, we believe we can expand the church together our vision is to plant 1,000 churches and have 1 million worshipers around the world, wow. around the globe. So it's good uh, to know that you are with us. So we have the same value in honoring faith, Holy Spirit, and Pastor Phil Pringle is a uh, known uh, leaders, global leaders. Uh, his book is really mandatory for all the Bible schools. And beside that, he's also a songwriter. He also uh, wrote many books and trained many leaders. So we're really looking forward in Indonesia to expand God's kingdom with you all. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor. Well, we're so excited. Uh, and uh, Pastor Joshua, would you just pray for us as we kind of start this journey together as a family? Sure. Well, uh, let's pray for the spirit of unity, for the wisdom and for the courage. Uh, let's, let's come. Uh, Father God, we, uh, we come right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for the covenant. We thank you for the relationship that you had built uh, among us and we pray for the spirit of unity that Pastor Alex as the lead pastor of TC Church bringing to all the pastors, all the leaders. We pray for the courage to make good decision, to make good planning, also to bring influence as well as affluence to all the business people, to all the young leaders, to the young families. We pray, Lord, as you have given Pastor Alex love in the street, let the love overflow. Let the people drinking and eating from this abundance of love. We pray also, Pastor Janae, there are many songs of freedom, songs of comfort that you had called her to rebuild. Many people that have, that have uh, their, their broken lives, that you fulfill the word in Isaiah, that you shall <coughs> call them as the repairer of the broken walls. So I speak blessing to Pastor Alex, I speak life, I speak wisdom, and I speak unity and courage. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen.
Thank you so much, Pastor Joshua. Thank you for the blessing and thank you for accepting us into the family of C3. And we're so excited for what God has in this next season and as we continue to advance the kingdom of God. We love you so much. Enjoy the service. Well, hello to TC Online Campus. My name's Janae, and I am really believing that God has something for us today. We are entering into our part one of our Good Sex, Bad Sex series, and I believe that God has something for all of us who are watching. Now, something that we love to do as a community is just to step forward in all that God has for us, what He wants to do in and through us together as a community. And one of the ways we do that is through our generosity. We're generous because our God is so generous with us. So what we love to do every week is open up an opportunity for any of you who feel led to give, who call the collective home. If you go down to the link below, it's just gonna lead you to a page that will give you all the different ways that you can give today. We are praying for you. We are believing for incredible things. We love you and we hope you enjoy the service. Hey TC family, welcome to our online Sunday service. I love it that you are here, no matter where you are. If you are in your home, in your office, if you're in an airport somewhere, or if you're in a cafe, I love it that you decided to tune in today and join our services. You know, so many people around the world are watching and you may feel alone where you are, but I just want you to understand something, that no matter how you're watching this, as far as with a friend or by yourself or with your cat, you're not alone because just by tuning in, you are becoming a part of something bigger than you. See, Jesus gave up everything so you would be a part of the body of Christ. But the fact that you decide to participate in what the body is doing this morning means that you've taken a step of faith to receive something from God. You know, there's so much media out there, isn't there? There's, there's books and there's podcasts and there's sermons. And when I talk to Christians now during this global pandemic, I swear to you, all of a sudden people became like super sermon Christians, like listening to all these messages throughout the week through different online preachers and all this stuff. And it's amazing. But what is not amazing is I'll meet people that listen to different messages from different churches all the time, but they aren't really experiencing any changes of their heart. And that's frustrating. You know why? Because God wants something great for you. God wants you to take something, and oftentimes it doesn't have to be complicated, but he wants to take you to take simple things that you understand and that you learn, and he wants you to apply those to your life and obey. See, when we apply God's truth to our life, when we surrender and submit to what the Holy Spirit of God is speaking to us, we see transformation. It's amazing how God can work all over the world through broken people and broken churches and broken messages, and he can do something for you. So my hope and my prayer is that right now, wherever you are, you're sitting there and you're expectant that God is gonna speak something to you this morning. You know, we're starting a new little mini series out and it's called Good Sex, Bad Sex. <clears throat> and you might be thinking, well, you know, Pastor Alex, is there such thing as bad sex? And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. And the reason for this series is because at TC, we really want people to have good sex. You know, I was talking to the director of our production team right before the message, and I said, why do you think this message is important? And he said, so I can have great sex. And I said, amen. And that's the truth, isn't it? Isn't that something we want? Because sex was created by God to be great. Sex was created by God for us to enjoy and for us to bring increase and richness to our life. But oftentimes, instead of buying into God's heart for sex for us, we buy into a lot of other people's hearts for sex for us. And often we just end up confused. You know, I wanna to read to you from the book of Genesis and then I'm gonna read a little more scripture and we're gonna talk practically about what this looks like on a sexual journey wherever you are because I really want us to catch God's heart for this. And I wanna start in Genesis chapter one, verse 26. And this is what it says. It says, then God said, and this is a part of the creation story. And wherever you stand on the creation story, whatever you believe, I think there's so much beauty if you would just tap in to the heart of these scriptures. It says, and then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heaven, 
over the livestock, over the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. I want to stop right there. So number one, what's our takeaway from this? Number one, our takeaway should be that of all the creation that God spoke into existence during this time period, he put man and woman above all of this. Is that because he wanted us to oppress nature in his creation? No, it was to show us the intentionality, the purpose, and the favor he has on us as his creation. Have you ever heard the the, the statement, with great power comes great responsibility. See, God gave us great position, great power, because he trusts us to be responsible with what he's been given to us. And a part of that is him emphasizing that we are created in his image. Nothing else is created in his image, but we're created in his image. Why? So we can not only reflect his image, but also so we could walk in his image. So we get to live this beautiful God-like life on earth. We get to like just celebrate and rejoice over his creation, who he is and who we are in him. And God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heaven, and over everything that moves on the earth. And then God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed in the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And in verse 30, it says, and to every beast of the earth and every uh, bird in the heaven and everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so, and God saw everything that he had made And behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and then there was morning, the sixth day. I want to stop right here because there is so much that you and I need to understand about God's heart for us as his people. First of all, we are his very good creation. See, I don't know if you grew up in church or grew in in some sort of religious environment that emphasized on the depravity or the corruption or the brokenness of humans. Now, are people broken? Are there people deprived? Are there, does that exist? Absolutely. But that's not the whole story. In fact, it started out as we are very good. The narrative doesn't start out with our failure. The narrative doesn't start with our corruption. The narrative doesn't start when we're off track. It starts when we're on track, right in the center of God's track for us because he created us as his very good creation, his prized creation, reflecting his image. That means that he's proud of us. That means that he believes in us. The fact that he would put us on earth and set us down over all of his creation and say, I trust them to reflect my love, my glory, and my grace to all of creation. And he gave us the instruction to do what? To multiply, which is so beautiful because what that means is that as a part of our God image, just like the creator God creates, now he's given mankind the gift of creation to multiply and bring forth more people, more of his prized possession on the earth. So if we're good and we're God's good creation, then what we create should be good. What we give birth to should be good. What we bring forth in this life should be good and sex is not at all separated from what shares in that very good. So God created us to have great sex. And in most religious or spiritual circles, oftentimes sex is shamed or it's embarrassing or it's weird or it's not appropriate. Are there things in sex that aren't appropriate? Are we going to talk about that in a minute? Yeah, we are. But God's heart for us is that it would be very good because we're very good. You know, I love the picture that God later on brought to mankind as he revealed what sex is all about for us. And when you read the Old Testament, when you read the Hebrew scriptures on how they related to each other with sex, you'll find this word yada. And this word yada means simply knowing one another. So whenever they would talk about the fruitful and multiplying, the making love, the, you know, bow, bow, wow. I don't know if you get that reference, but if you do, you know what I'm saying. 
they would actually say yada. They wouldn't say they did this, they had intercourse, they did. No, they would say yada. Why did they use this word? They used this word because this word describes a deep knowing of one another. It, 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 it describes a passionate exchange. It, it describes two flesh becoming one, fitting together perfectly and completely unified behind this act of love and sex. See, thank, I think that's beautiful because some people might be saying, oh, well, God gave them sex and sex was originally just for procreation or, 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 or multiplying and subduing the earth. And if you try to take that narrative, I guess you could. But the fact of the matter is, is there's so much more revealed in God's heart from this word, Yuda, because it talks about how God desires us to know one another and be known by one another. He doesn't want us to be isolated. He doesn't want me to be on an island alone, away from my wife, independent from her, but he wants my vulnerability and he wants this exchange to happen where I know the deepest part of who she is and she knows the deepest part of who we are. See, that's the original intention for sex that we would be able to make love with someone that we don't just know physically, but we get to know them spiritually and emotionally and mentally in every facet of who they are. In fact, I've been married now for almost 15 years and I would say that the sex has gotten better and better and better because of how much more I know my wife and how much more she knows me. It's amazing, this gift. But you know, that's not obviously the whole story because if you're on any side, I mean, come on, like we all know, like IG, like the world's picture of sex has become very different. It is very different from God's desire that it would be something good and something beautiful and something with deep, rich experience attached to it because it's this deep idea of knowing real intimacy, real understanding of another person. You know, when I look around, I see that sex is now just used for almost anything. It's used to sell things, it's used to market things, it's used to get people's attention. On a more destructive note, it's used to affirm someone's identity, where based off of sex, I am this person, rather than finding your identity in something big and beautiful and being the image of God, just limiting who you are to something that you do. Also, it can be something that we strive for to gain peace. We think, man, if I could just have sex, and I remember, man, I remember those days. Hello, and I still remember those days like yesterday. Maybe it was yesterday. But it's like, you could, if you could just get this thing, all of a sudden you could have peace in your heart and you could feel better about yourself. You could feel more firm, more secure. Also, some people find it as a place of rest for their soul. They're stir crazy. They're anxious. But if you have sex, you could just <gasps> calm down. See, we leverage sex. And when we leverage something, we minimize its value because it's supposed to be something bigger and more beautiful than just being leveraged as those things. I mean, don't get me wrong. In my marriage, can sex bring something peaceful? Amen. Hallelujah. There's been times where Janae and I were like, you know, not, not, not aligning. You know what I'm saying? The stars were kind of messed up. And all of a sudden when, you know, and then boom, and then it's like, whoo, world peace. Amen. Hallelujah. If there's kids in the room, I'm sorry for that. But, but we don't want to reduce sex to something small and something that just can be used for a potential gain or a, or a, a immediate gain that's just short lived. See, God's heart for sex is that it wouldn't just bring a moment of peace, but God's heart for sex that when it's a part of something beautiful, when it's a celebration of two flesh becoming one, when it's, a, when it's in a union, and not just a union with man and woman, but a union with God, that it becomes a representation of his fulfillment. It becomes almost an illustration for the peace that he can give. Because see, when you have sex, you might have peace for a moment or an hour or a day, but in Christ, you can have peace forever. See, Christ created us for something so much more than just a physical experience, but so much of us treat sex like just a physical experience. In fact, 
and all the ways that I talked about looking for identity in sex, looking for peace in sex, looking for rest for your soul in sex. This is not a 2021 issue. This has been an issue since the beginning. In fact, they used to do offerings and worship to sex gods to try to get peace and sex gods to try to find their identity in these different idols of worship to try to give rest to their soul. And God does not want us to reduce it to something that actually will end up bringing destruction to our lives, but it's still happening today. And if you ever experienced sexual brokenness, you understand exactly what I'm saying, don't you? If you have a friend that's still struggling, still burning and still hurting from something where she was either victimized or he was victimized or they were hurt or they were used, no one gets up in the morning and says, I want to be used and hurt sexually. No one gets up in the morning and says, I hope I find someone that will sleep with me, but not care about me and not want to talk to me. And sometimes that's portrayed in media, but I'm just telling you from my experience, everything I see in real life, it's just not true. And if you want to get your real life instruction from Netflix, then far be it from me to stand in your way. However, I'm telling you that I just don't see it. See, actually, you read about this all the time when you look at the context of ancient Eastern cultures. In fact, there was cultures in the New Testament, when we look at the scripture, where they believed that they could reduce sex to something just physical, that it didn't affect them spiritually or emotionally at all. And they were the masters of their spirit and masters of their emotions. So what they did with their body didn't really matter, right? There's all these ways that mankind have gotten off track because what's God's, God's original intention? He created us and he said that we were very good, which by the way, let me help you understand something. We had done nothing when we were God's very good creation. We didn't earn it. We didn't perform it. We didn't somehow get an attaboy or a pat on the back. He just gave us the title of his very good creation with, with the expectation of nothing besides the fact that we were his. So it's his very good creation. He gave us this very good thing called sex. But we've just gotten confused. We maybe use it for the wrong thing and we've been hurt by it because we use it for the wrong thing. But it's not supposed to be something shaming. It's not supposed to be something embarrassing or something hurtful. But it's supposed to be something beautiful as a representation, as an illustration for a beautiful union of man and woman together as one flesh. A representation of God and his people together as one. You know, I think that the hardest thing for some of us is we've gone down that road. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? We've had the brokenness. You know, when I remember when, uh, when, I, was, when I was a kid, I, uh, and a lot of you guys know this, is I, I, had, uh, I, had, I had issues with drug and addiction. And, and drinking. And I remember a friend of mine would say like, bro, like why would you wake up in the morning and the first thing you want to go to is alcohol or drugs? Like uh, when, why would you want to do cocaine right in the morning? Why would you do, want to do this right in the morning? And I remember, I remember trying to explain it to him and trying to help him understand after thinking about it for a few minutes. And oftentimes you make these foolish decisions that really hurt you when you're under the influence. You know what I mean? Whether it's wrecking your car, whether it's hooking up with someone you don't want to be with, whether it's saying things that you don't want to say, getting into, I don't know. You know, you, you can fill in the blanks. Come on. I mean, you, you, know, you get it. So that shame and that guilt and that, and that embarrassment of doing something or being a part of something that you know is not appropriate for who you are, you're really quick to find an escape instead of experiencing that shame and that guilt and that embarrassment. So it just becomes this perpetual cycle, right? And I would say that oftentimes I see sexual brokenness affecting us in the same way. We make choices that we maybe aren't sure about or we thought are going to satisfy us or affirm our identity or finally make us feel like I have peace, I climbed that mountain. But the fact of the matter is, is the peace is short-lived the affirmation of our identity is short-lived and then we're kind of left saying, okay, now what? And that now what feeling sometimes can be very heavy and hurtful. Sometimes it can bring great anxiousness or stress or guilt. 
this feeling of dissatisfaction, this feeling of, I want you to listen to me, inadequacy, which means that you aren't enough. So we're willing to do whatever it takes to escape that feeling of not being enough. And sometimes the quickest thing to escape that feeling is another experience sexually with someone or something. And, and sex is not just, obviously, we know in this day and age, it's not just about what you do with another person, but there's, you know, there's pornography and there's all these other outlets, right? There's all these things that you can find that escape in. And then it becomes this perpetual cycle. And this is, I'm going to be really honest with you, my church tribe, my church family, from what I experienced and what I know so many of us have experienced is we can find ourselves in a position where our expectations of sex aren't really good expectations anymore. In fact, sometimes they're just bad expectations. We don't even believe that sex can be something beautiful and something whole and something satisfying, something that's gonna bring greater beauty, something that's like the original intention of it, which is knowing someone and being vulnerable and accepted and loved no matter what, and extending that love and that that acceptance no matter what. We don't even believe that we can have that anymore. We don't even believe that we can receive that or that's available to us anymore because of our decisions or because of our brokenness. But the fact of the matter is, is that that's the very thing that's getting in the way of us being able to receive it because instead of really believing in what God has for us, we start to believe that we can only get what we feel like we deserve because of our brokenness. So TC family, I'm here to tell you that it's not too late. I wanna read to you from Corinthians and this is the apostle Paul and he's ministering to this exact situation because in this church in Corinth, there is people that had settled for sexual brokenness. They had settled for things that felt good in a moment, but left sadness and grief in the morning. And he's speaking to them and he's bringing this correction. And this isn't a correction of shame, but it's a correction of let's get back on course with what God has for us. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13, it says, you say food was made for the stomach and the stomach for food. This is true. Though someday God will do away with both of them, but you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual immorality. And I want to explain to you what that word sexual immorality is. That word sexual immorality is sex anytime it's off of God's original intent. Anytime it isn't something done with His love, His agape love. Anytime it isn't something where there's an exchange and a deep intimacy and a trust of knowing one another and vulnerability with one another and vulnerability with God, where it's not just something you're doing to get something, but it's something you're doing to give something. And that common unity is there. And it's the two flesh becoming one. He says, your bodies were not made for sexual morality. They were made for the Lord and the Lord cares about your bodies. And God will raise us from the dead by his power, just as he raised our Lord from the dead. Don't you realize then that your bodies are actually parts of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. Don't you realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? For the scriptures say, the two are united into one, but the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. See, TC family, the Apostle Paul had this church community that he loved very much and he saw their sexual brokenness and he saw their hurt. And his, the sexual brokenness wasn't coming from him casting or reigning judgment. It was coming from him having conversations with them and then coming to him with pain and sadness and grief because they really thought that their sexual experiences were going to give them a greater satisfaction and a joy and a lasting affirmation. And it didn't. And it became a very unhealthy cycle within their spiritual life. And the Apostle Paul's response is God cares about your body. 
He cares about you. He loves you. He doesn't just turn a, a blind eye when you're going through pain. He doesn't turn a blind eye when you're hurting and you make a decision with your body that hurts you or hurts others. He cares about your body, even to the point where he said, it's not just your body, but it's my body. See, part of the cross and the finished work of Christ is that God came down as man and he gave his life so he could experience the pain, the heartache, the brokenness, the hurt, the betrayal, the rejection, the feeling of being used, the feeling of being inadequate. He experiences those things with us. So what he experiences with us isn't just empathy. Do you hear me? It isn't just empathy. When we are hurting sexually, he's hurting too. And as someone hurting with us, he has a vested interest in our recovery from the pain. See, I don't know what has gone on in your sexual history. I don't know if you've had sexual brokenness in your marriage, in your relationships, in your dating. I don't know what has gone on, but I know that Jesus cares. That it's not like you can just come to church on Sunday and say, well, I read my Bible, or I did this, or he only cares about my spirit, because that's not true. He cares about your body because you're one body with him and he doesn't want you to hurt anymore. And whatever has happened, you're never beyond the passive point of no return. God still has new mercies for you every single day. He still has incredible hopes and plans for you and wholeness for you sexually every single day. And you might be thinking, well, I've been in this relationship for so long or I've been making these decisions for no so long. But don't be arrogant to think that your so long is longer than God's so long. God has been journeying us with us, his people, for so long. And he's been getting it for so long. And there's never a so long that's so long that God can't do something incredible and redemptive in your life. So I'm gonna pray and I want you to pray with me. Because maybe, maybe you never had sexual struggles or, or a feeling of sexual brokenness personally, but maybe you grew up around extreme sexual brokenness. Maybe you just saw it portrayed in a really shameful light, or you saw destruction because of your parents' relationship or other relationships in your family. Maybe there was sexual abuse or sexual misuse that hurt you and victimized you, or maybe you kind of fall into that place where you pursue sex as a conquest as something that's gonna bring you greater identity or greater satisfaction or greater peace, where the truth of the matter is, is now that you've learned, at the most it only brings those things for a moment and your soul still is not satisfied. Whatever your experience is, God has good things for you. And I want you to pray with me and we're gonna believe together that God can bring sexual healing and sexual restoration in our life. So sex wouldn't be something we use or leverage, but sex would be a part of our human experience as image bearers of God to experience His love and His satisfaction and His fulfillment. So Father, I just pray. God, I pray that anyone watching right now would experience your fullness sexually. Lord, that your Holy Spirit would help them identify things, even things that are scary, even things that are shameful, even things that are embarrassing. Your Spirit would help them identify things and that you would remind them that you're a safe person to bring these things to. Maybe they felt like they could never share it with anybody. They couldn't tell their pastor, they couldn't tell their family, they couldn't tell their spouse but because you're our high priest, Jesus, we bring these things to you. We say, Jesus, take my brokenness, take my hurt, take the things in my life I've wrestled with, take the sexual hurt and pain and give it to you. God, I wanna experience the fullness of what you have for me, above and beyond what I could get for myself by taking it. 
but I want to experience the fullness of what only you can give me sexually in, in my relationship. So Father, I just thank you so much for your healing power, for your beauty and your love, the fact that in you there's no shame, in you there's no condemnation, but in you there's healing, there's love, and that you're safe. We thank you for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, TC family, I just wanna take some time and thank you so much for participating in our Sunday service. I just wanna make sure also you know that if that message blessed your life and if God was working in you or speaking something to you about living a healthier sexuality in your marriage, we have another part two video available on our Life YouTube channel. You could follow the link below and head over there, and that way you can just get a greater picture on how to have a healthier, more holistic understanding on God's heart for sex for your relationship. All right, we love you so much. Thank you so much. See you next week. What is up, TC fam? From wherever you may be, I encourage you to stand up on your feet and sing and dance this with us. Let's go. How can it be?
And that is it for today's service. Guys, I just want to remind you, if you want to ask us anything or just contact us, you can scan this QR code. And also, if you want to be connected even more, you can head over to our website where you can see our online connect groups that's happening throughout the week. And I'll see you guys next week, same time, same URL. Bye!